listening to the Colby Cheese Gaming Podcast, your source for League of Legends and other gaming news, updates, and discussion. Hey, what's up, guys? This is Colby Cheese, and you're listening to podcast number 14. It is June 24th, 2011. And man, oh man, what a week, what a week. Just had the Dream Hack Championships. Season 1 came to a close. And, of course, a big patch right after that. And so let's just talk about all of that that went down. And I don't really have a lot of other things to talk about in relation to other games. Because for the most part in this last week or so, I spent all my time just playing League of Legends and working on Dream Hack stuff. So. Aww. What? I know, I know. I mean, we'll, we'll do it next week. I promise. Come on, give me a break. Everyone was super excited about DreamHack and who was going to win it. Man, it was such a long event. I mean, three full days of casting. I did the first two days. I don't know if you guys watched my stream or Freaks. doesn't really matter. The games were amazing. But the overall outcome is that EU were in the top two spots. Team Silla Mid got third place. A lot of people did think that Team Silla Mid and Epic Gaming had a pretty good chance to take it. However, just a few different mistakes as all it really took for Team Fnatic to secure the victory. They played extremely well, and I have to say, I, I think I might be a Shushe fanboy now. <laughs> we really got to see the strength of AP Alistar. I think that a lot of people knew he was good, but that really showed just how good he can be. And one that we weren't expecting is the AP Gragas. Man, that guy just runs in and wrecks people all game long. He's unstoppable in the lane. So for all of you that were disappointed way back in the day when they took out a few items that made Gragas not so good, he's still great as an AP caster. However, the only thing is that he does rely on getting great ultimates off to be effective. So if you are going to play AP Gragas, you will have to get some practice in. Don't expect to just instantly come out like Shushe. <laughs> we also kind of saw the EU meta that was being used for the most part. Seems that in NA, it's more of a tanky DPS and the AD carry will solo and we'll just have one AP carry. But in the EU meta, it's more of a, hey, we're gonna have two AP uh, casters go solo, usually like a tanky AP and then a squishier AP. So maybe a, an Alistar will go in one lane and then you'll have a Malzahar in the other one. And then you'll have your AD champion with a support on bottom and some type of utility jungler to just finish around the composition. A lot of times you even saw the dual support with the Nunu uh, jungler and then you'll have perhaps, uh, you know, just some other support in the other lane. It was really great to see that being played at the actual championship finals and hopefully more people in ranked games will actually try and tailor their team compositions around this style of gameplay because I do feel it's strong. There's still a lot of uh, you know difference between these really coordinated teams in ranked 5 games and solo queue but overall I do really enjoy the fact that we had so many people watching. My goodness, there was over 200,000 people at a time watching these streams and I'm guessing somewhere over a million were watching each day uh, as a total. That is pretty huge and I think it actually broke all records of any esports event that has ever taken place save for an actual um, nationwide broadcast in Korea of StarCraft. I think they had like a million people watching, but that was actually a TV station broadcasting that, and we all know that Korea is really big on StarCraft, so it doesn't count. So far, for the for the biggest live casted event, League of Legends is definitely the one that takes the cake. So what does this mean? Uh, pretty much that now League of Legends is definitely seen as the number one esports game in the world at this point. It's actually the second largest game in North America behind World of Warcraft for those of you who didn't know. This should draw a whole lot more attention to other people and other leagues such as MLG. I'm pretty sure that they have no other choice but to pick up League of Legends at this point. They were talking about picking up 
uh, some type of MOBA, whether it be Han or Dota 2 when it comes out, or League of Legends. But at this point, I don't think that there's any other choice out there but League of Legends, seeing as we are the most fun game to watch and play. That's opinion, of course, but I don't care. My opinion's right. <laughs> For those of you who want to see just a couple of highlights from the games, uh, one of my fans actually did send me a video that they had done with a couple of highlights from different kills and things like that in the in the champ champions. And I actually saw a lot of clips from Sushi, so that was kind of interesting to me. You guys can check it out here. It's not the highest quality, but uh, it is kind of neat to go back and watch that. Especially if you did watch it, you can kind of relive some of those really epic moments. I also thought it was awesome to see what some of the top players look like in person and whether than, you know, just hearing their voices on streams and whatnot. Obviously, I knew what kind of Hotshot GG looked like and some of the other guys, but it was kind of cool to see all of them all there on the on the screens and uh, up there in person and, and doing the interviews with uh, with them afterwards was, was a, just a lot of fun. And I, and I thought the event was really well done by Riot. They did a great job with all of the camera work and all of the uh, transitions and editing and all that good stuff stuff. The observer mode looked really great. It was fantastic and I have to give them props. The only thing that I would like to actually see in the future would be possibly some type of counter that showed which teams had like the like how many dragons blue team has or maybe even the timers on different uh, buffs so that the commentators can actually talk about that so they can say oh hey it looks like the dragon's going to be coming up in a minute now so we'll see if the teams are going to get in place for that you know just something like that that would be cool to actually have that as a display so hopefully someone from Riot hears this I don't know if anyone from Riot actually watches my stuff but whatever <laughs> probably not because I think that they did a newsletter for um, for the DreamHack qualifiers and they showed all like the fan sites and stuff and I'm pretty sure I wasn't on there. I saw like League Top 10 and a couple of other smaller websites, but they didn't mention me, so maybe not. I don't know. I have to thank all of the fans so far for, uh, I know I had spoken in some of my previous League Short clips and in my last podcast about sending me clips, and uh, so a lot of people have been sending me some stuff to look at, and I do plan to get around to editing some of those and putting some of them up later. I haven't done it yet, but I will definitely get to it. Also, I would like to make a request though. Some of you have been sending, sending them to my to my YouTube inbox, and I would have to request that you please send them to colby at colbycheese.com. That's where you should be sending all of your emails, or a clip request or whatever because it's a lot harder for me to go through. I can't actually star or put certain items in folders if you send it and I get lots of messages on YouTube. So please, please, please send your clips to colby at colbycheese.com, not to my YouTube inbox. Thank you. But speaking of really cool clips, hey, check this one out. I actually found this video these guys did a uh, clip where they actually took down the middle tower at about one minute into the game, bought a ton of wards, and they all just went there and took down the tower. It was super hilarious. I definitely would want to try that sometime if I was with a bunch of friends of mine. Good stuff. Props to you guys. All right, so let's talk about some of the patch notes, man. This was a pretty big patch that just came out, and they made a lot of really neat changes, and I like to go over those. First of all, the new champion, Yorick. Man, tisk, tisk, tisk. I am super disappointed in this one. I was expecting a lot more, and I definitely didn't get it. I, I did spend some RP on him, but that's because I didn't have enough IP. Not really a big deal. I did want to bring you guys that video that I did. Oh, yes, I did do a, uh, a little first impressions of Yorick, so you can watch that. You can click on the little link here. Or it's in the description down below. But overall, I think that the champion's pretty weak and not worth buying. So that's kind of the, the short, in a nutshell, version for you. Moving on to some more interesting news, however. In the patch notes, they did quite a few changes to shields. So in other, uh, in other patches previously, or up until now, you could have a champion that would put a shield on you. And if you have some type of lifesteal effect, then you can't actually life leech off of that shield. Also, it won't break things like the mobility boots and a couple of other things like that. And they changed all of that so you can now, uh, shields are treated just like HP and, and things like that. So that's kind of cool. Um, as far as champions are concerned, they, uh, oh wait, there's actually another mechanic change. They made it to where you can no longer like leap towards and you can no longer grab wards. So, if, uh, so they kind of made dumb, they're dumbing the game down just a bit so that, uh, let's say someone's coming to grab you 
and you have a ward in your inventory, you normally, like, like for Lantern's Blitzcrank, it's going to grab you. You can put down a ward right next to you, and Blitzcrank will grab that ward instead of you. It adds a, another layer of skill to the game, and I think it's pretty cool to have that, but they decided to take that out. Also, you can no longer put a ward down, like, on the other side of a wall, and if you're Jax, you know, you can't, like, leap to that ward any longer. So, overall, I think that they made a huge mistake here. That is one thing that kind of separates... Uh, good players from expert players is, is seeing people able to do certain tricks like that and I don't think it was game breaking at all it was not being abused it was actually used very competitively and so I have to say bad job Riot you're uh, you know slap on the wrist for that one I don't know what you were thinking with that change man oh man they just completely destroyed Evelyn this patch and that's fine I don't like Eve she's really annoying to play against and I think that they kind of made the right decision I mean they, they pretty much deleted this champion from the game, but at the same time, I can think of other champions that are kind of useless as well, so whatever. They just kind of took out the aspect of being able to stun people, and they also reduced her healing whenever she kills things. She also They also reduced her attack speed, and they also, well, that's pretty much it, but basically they made her absolutely useless. That frees up another ban slot for me, so good stuff. They did make some changes to Fiddlesticks also. They gave him more range on his Drain, gave him more damage on his Dark Wind, and they gave him a little bit more scaling on his ultimate also. Now, he can get into that ultimate quicker as well. He only has to channel it for 1.5 seconds. Overall, though, I'm not sure if this is going to make Fiddlesticks OP or even viable at all. Right now, he's not really that viable unless you're really good with him. I mean, I've seen some top-level level players do okay. However, unless you're a top-level player, I don't think Fiddlesticks is viable, and I'd hate to see him in any of my games. One champion they pretty much gave a complete... Hell yeah, too, is Gangplank. I've actually heard that he's being banned in some of the higher ELO matches. I'm not sure about that. I'd have to confirm. But I did try him out, and holy crap, man. He's apparently super sick jungle mode now. He's the only AD carry that can jungle at this point. And uh, so what I'm thinking is that the difference in him and other junglers is that other junglers are kind of like more tanky and support related but now you can have like an ad carry in the bottom lane and gangplank can get decent amount of farm in the jungle he gets extra gold from killing things with his q ability so he's gonna get great gold from the jungle and then what they did was they added a slow which stacks onto not only his auto attacks but his q now applies his passive as well which is going to do ticking damage even more. They, add, they up the damage and he's going to slow. So he can come out of the jungle with a red buff and do tons of slow to people. So he's got great ganks. And then he's got a global ability. So he can be like hidden away in the jungle somewhere and run up with his ultimate. And that's just amazing overall. They increased the damage of his cannon barrage just a little bit also. But uh, so from what I've seen, this does make gameplay quite viable. He can do the jungle pretty quickly with uh, with those changes to his passive. And it makes him a viable uh, ganker as well. You probably don't want to see him in the lane. I'm sure he would do fine. But overall, just put him in the jungle. And you can have your AD support on bottom. And then you can have your tanky AP champions in the middle and top lane. So I think that's pretty good. Uh, change they made to him. I don't know if it's going to be oh my god nerf OP But I think it's pretty viable at this point. So thumbs up. I like this one Bit of a tweak to cast it which I haven't been able to test out or see for myself They actually gave him damage like they changed his passive instead of giving him armor penetration They gave him bonus magic damage with a 0.15 ability power uh, Excuse me scaling on his auto attack so he'll at max rank he'll do an extra six an extra 60 damage and then whatever ap ratio have so you probably have like maybe an extra 90 damage at uh you know at around mid game if you have that or late game if you have that uh built up so i don't know it sounds like it could be good but i'm not sure we'll have to wait and see Vayne and Rumble were toned down just a little bit. Rumble doesn't have quite the amount of damage on his ultimate anymore, and they even increased the cooldown, so I'm not sure if we're still going to see Rumbles in every game. Uh, I know he was a big ban in Europe for a while. Not so much in North America. He wasn't that popular just yet, but he was getting there. I was starting to see more Rumbles in the games. Um, yeah, okay, that's fair enough. I don't really play Rumbles, so I don't mind not playing against him either, so that's fine. Vayne was given quite a bit less damage from her ultimate, and her tumble does, do, does less damage also. 
Not only that, but she gets a lot less move speed from her ultimate. It only gives uh, triple move speed rather than quadruple when chasing people. So, you know, I'm not quite sure if this is going to make her completely useless or not. I've seen some veins and they did decent. I laned against a vein with Kale, which I had thought that the patch had gone through on her, but apparently they had already reverted, and I whipped the crap out of her and ended up carrying the game. Maybe I'll put that game up later as well. <laughs> we'll have to wait and see. But uh, overall, I think that Vayne is uh, tweaked down a decent amount, and that's good. I hope they don't change her any further because uh, I do think that she's uh, she's definitely great in the, in the later game, but if they nerf her anymore, she's going to be really not so good. Now, I just mentioned Kel. This is a huge thing for me, and... Kel was definitely my main back in the day and one of my favorite, probably is my favorite champion. It's just that uh, she does have some issues early on. So whenever I heard that they ninja patched in Kel changes, I was so excited. I went and played her and I definitely had a lot of fun. I, I did like the changes they made. Really the main thing that Kel needed was the reduced cooldown on her E ability, which is the Righteous Fury. It's her, it's what makes her ranged. And it gives her the ability to farm much easier. Unfortunately, they decided to revert everything back to normal old kill. And I'm actually extremely disappointed because I was reading and a chat from Shirelia that, you know, she's the one who's doing all these changes for Kale that they're actually going to completely destroy her passive now. So just so you know, the passive gives her 30% more ability power on um, based on her AD, or I guess 30% of her ability power is converted to attack damage, and then like 20% of her attack damage is converted to ability power. This is a really great passive. It allows her to become a really amazing carry later on into the game. She's an amazing hybrid and does a lot of great stuff for the team. She can help push towers while keeping everybody healed up quite nicely, and she does good amounts of damage. So the problem with taking that away from her completely is that now she has no scaling. She's no longer a hybrid champion. And since she's got abilities that scale on AP, which is her Q and her heal, you can't really build for her correctly and still be an effective carry, which is what she is. So once you take that away, what is she? She's not a support. She's not a carry now. And she just doesn't make sense. I think they need to just leave her the hell alone and give her the reduced cooldown on the E. And you don't have to change literally anything else about her. Just make it so that she can farm early game and sustain herself. Perhaps the uh, the mana thing is okay too. Like take off some of the mana cost on the E, possibly. But other than that, that's really all she needs is a bit less mana cost and then she's good to go. In fact, leave her late game mana cost alone. All she needs is early game mana cost need to be a little bit lower on her uh, abilities. So that's pretty much it. If they can do that, Kel will be fine in my opinion. I don't think they need to nerf her to oblivion by taking her passive away and giving her some they said they're supposed to give her like a stacking armor penetration magic penetration that's not good i don't get it it doesn't make sense to me to be honest they're gonna have to buff up her other abilities like quite a lot and even at that point i'm not sure so either way i maybe i'm just talking um without knowing too much about it it's just the way it seems to me at this point again i'm kind of more yeah, I'm more like tied to this just because Kelly is my favorite champion and I'd hate to see her still destroyed I mean, it's been so long since she's been able to be used like in a game without people laughing at you and I, It was so much fun last night playing her again, and I just remembered why so hopefully they make the right decisions and Kel is actually viable once the next patch comes through they were apparently going to nerf Vlad, but instead they buffed him. I'm not sure why they did that. They gave him more damage early game, which is where is pretty much the only time when you can shut him down. And uh, they gave him one second less cooldown at max rank. They left everything else the same, but lowered the cooldown at max rank of transfusion by a second. Now, okay, you could say that's a slight nerf, but overall they buffed his early game damage. He's still good. So I don't know. I mean, have you guys been able... Who plays Vlad? Honestly, I don't play Vlad. He's not really a champion I like to play. Is this a big change to him? To me, it sounds like a buff. 
but I don't know. Maybe you guys can tell me down below in the comments. I haven't talked to many people yet that have been practicing on him, so perhaps I'll have to discuss this one later. Now, other than a lot of other bug changes and small fixes here and there, the final one I saw change was, ooh dear. They actually changed the cost of shifting stances quite a bit on his early game. It's the same late game, but uh, early on it's it's about 20 mana cheaper, so he can, I think, jungle quite a bit faster now. From what I hear talking to Stonewall, he's an extremely quick jungler at this point, and Phoenix Stance activation does a lot more damage than it did previously, so, huh, I don't know, that's kind of interesting. Uh, let's just take a look. One last thing that I didn't mention was the fact that you can no longer get a thousand gold for killing someone that's on a big killing streak. You can only get up to one, uh, 500. Um, so I don't know, I think that's kind of cool. I mean, it, it, isn't, it doesn't punish people so much for just making one mistake after playing so well. I don't know, what do you guys think? I mean, I like it, but uh, I'm sure some people don't like that because they're like, oh, how are we gonna come back from being so far behind now? And perhaps you can say that on the other hand, maybe you actually are behind and maybe one of your champions is doing well, not dying and is the only one getting all the kills. And then the enemy team kills that one champion and now they're even another thousand gold ahead. So you can kind of look at it from both sides and uh, make your decision there. All right, I wanna move back to esports for just a bit. I've kind of covered the patch notes and dream hack a little bit. However, now that that's over with, what do you have left? Okay, so I'm still gonna be doing commentaries for the National Esports League. We'll be doing the playoffs pretty soon, I'm pretty sure, for the Premier League, as well as the Major Series. Not only that, but it looks like there are a couple of other tournaments popping up here and there. I've actually heard of a league called Ivy Law, and essentially what that is, is it's, uh, it's colleges competing against each other to see which college is the best at League of Legends. Kind of cool, I like the idea. And I was talking to one of the guys behind it and he gave me a little bit of information on the tournament so I was gonna go ahead and share that with you guys today. The website is actually ivylol.com and it's the first collegiate league for League of Legends. The season is gonna be starting sometime in September and before that they're gonna have a preseason kickoff tournament which actually starts on June 29th. By the way, that's two days after my birthday. Cool. Anyhow, registration for it, if you want, uh, that actually goes until June 27th. And what he's telling me is that anyone who is currently enrolled in or will be attending college in the upcoming fall semester can actually join in and to the league and participate in the different tournaments. So I think that's pretty cool. You should definitely check that out and try and represent your school. I think where I live, it's, uh, it's going to be... Uh, Texas Tech. So I don't know if any of my fans are actually going to Texas Tech. I think one guy messaged me once and said he was actually going to Texas Tech, but uh, hell yeah, go Tech. <laughs> the tournament is actually going to have some Riot Point prize support, so hey, what the heck, might as well jump in there and see if you can win you some extra Riot Points to buy champions and skins and all that good stuff. The tournament's actually going to go until July 2nd, and the finals match will be on the Sunday. I'll probably be shoutcasting that. So get yourself up there in that tournament, and that way I can be shoutcasting your match. That's pretty much all for today, though. Kind of just talked about League of Legends stuff that I found interesting this week. And as always, continue to send me your awesome League of Legends clips and funny videos, etc. And I'll try and get those all edited up as quickly as possible. Other than that, I have a new type of video series that I did start as well. That should be up probably, uh, I'd say tomorrow. I'll wait until tomorrow. I've got the clip already done, but I don't wanna spam you guys with too many videos at once. So I'll be doing those as I play through games. Other than that, let's see. Oh, for those of you who didn't know, once again, I am doing game reviews for onrpg.com. So be sure to check those out on their YouTube or you can just Check it out from my website. I'm obviously gonna put up the links there for you to watch. And I created a playlist. If you, I don't know if you guys have looked, but I've been keeping some pretty good track of the different videos and playlists. So you can go to my channel and click on playlists and it will show you all of the different videos there so that you can watch them quickly and easily. Anyhow, this is Kobe Cheese, guys. Thanks for listening to my podcast. Hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you around for the next one. Peace out.